Minister Chibwe, can you take the mic and pray? We adore you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Libra du ricandaraba socoturu busha taraba zabadi Libra tara candiri ribu supa cataraba shada Labra du ricandaraba socoturu busha taraba sata Eraba cataraba shate te 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 Libra du ricandaraba socoto Ripa cataraba shate Eraba cataraba sandaraba shabate Libra du ricataraba sacataraba shata Worship is a personal thing. Worship divi defines your relationship with God. You have no one to blame. If you have not worshipped God, it's you who has not worshipped God. It's not something that somebody can do for you. It's something that you have to do for yourself. It's you to lift your hands if you have to lift your hands. It's you to bow if you have got to bow. 
but worship is a personal assignment. Bless the Lord. Allow me to greet and welcome all of you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I say it, I welcome you and I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can I have a better amen in this place? Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve. Give you a high five if you are standing next to somebody. I just want to greet all those who are watching us online in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. As we are about to get into the word of the Lord, I just want us to, 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 to maintain, hallelujah, the atmosphere of worship, even as we are listening to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet all the ministers. I greet all the pastors, all the elders in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we also put our hands together for our mother? She's in the house. Pastor Joanna, we bless the Lord for your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's get into the word of the Lord. Choir, the good Lord bless you. Let's put our hands together for our choir. You can do better than that if you're not jealous. Hallelujah. The challenge with the first service is that we have to chase time. Hallelujah. Can we believe God for a bigger place where the first service and everyone we can meet? Can we believe God? How many want to believe God with me for a bigger place where we don't have to rush to finish the service so that other people are coming, but we just do church, hallelujah, and we do God, hallelujah, and we do the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, because sometimes time also constrains us, hallelujah. I've noticed uh, my brother there... Uh, uh, Mr. Lamini, Minister, uh, uh, Mr. Lamini, we welcome you, Baba, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all the way from the UK, hallelujah, he's in the house today, we bless God for you in Jesus' name. We are going to get into the word of the Lord, you know we are chasing our, our theme that says uh, financial fortunes, we'll deal with financial fortunes, uh, second service, we'll deal with financial fortunes Monday and Friday, like that, hallelujah. I'm trying my level best that the first service, we deal with what God wants us to do. So this morning we are dealing with something called divine strategies to win all battles of life. Divine strategies to win all battles of life. Father, we thank you today. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' name, reveal yourself, Lord, oh God, through your word, speak to us, transform our lives, change our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 3, verse 12 to 18. Daniel chapter 3, verse 12 to 18. This is our way. Let's go. The book of Daniel, chapter number 3, verse number 12 to verse number 18. Yes. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They have served not thy gods, nor worshipped the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. 
Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sulphur, the stelsima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour in the midst of the burning fiery furnace, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, life has battles. And life is a battlefield. But you are supposed to know how you win divinely. Or in the ways of the Lord. If you don't know how to win divinely, you will come to church during the day and go to your witch doctor during the night. That's how life, tough life is. So point number one, for you to win, I'm just going to give you two points um, in these next coming 30 minutes and we're done. Point number one, do not compromise the principles of your godly consecration and covenant. You want to win divinely. You want to win in the matters of life, point number one, don't compromise the principles of your godly consecration and covenant. Hallelujah. The background of the story here, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he molds a golden image that was 90 feet tall and 9 feet thick. It was a huge structure that was set in the city of Babylon. And a very important announcement was made that whosoever hears any sound, any musical instrument that will be sounded by the king's band, you must fall down and worship the golden image. So the whole nation of Babylon, they were given that instruction. If you read from verse 1, that instruction was announced to everyone. And much more, the important people, those who had position in, in, in the government of that day, people even remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were also promoted and they were given positions. So, Everyone who had a position, they were called for that inauguration of the golden image. Hallelujah. And it was announced that everyone, whether you hear the sound of the horn or of the flute, or you just, wherever you are, if you were cooking, you leave the pot, you bow down. I don't know what we'll do if we're driving. But you're supposed to stop the car, get out of the car. You bow down to show that you are cooperating with the laws of Babylon. Hallelujah. In verse 12 where we have read, it was discovered that out of the whole population, there were three boys. Let me tell you, when you serve God, you can't go with the majority. Even the Bible is clear. It says the way to destruction is wide. Hallelujah. Three boys were discovered that they are not bowing. If they are doing their assignment, they continue the assignment. If they are, whatever they were doing, they will not bow. Hallelujah. And it was told.
told the king that they are two, they are not only boys, they are foreigners. They are Jews. They say they will not bow to what? Hallelujah. So point number one, do not compromise the principles of your godly co- co- secretion and covenant. Hallelujah. Why? Why did these boys refuse to bow? Because they knew they saved the God Almighty, the Ancient of Days. Exodus 23 to 5. They knew, they knew their consecration. The challenge with the Christians of today is that we, we jump onto everything. We compromise every day. On the basis that there is something called grace. Grace does not mean foolishness. Grace does not mean lack of identity. People must know if you are a Jew, you are a Jew. People must know if you are a child of God, you are a child of God. You don't do what they do. Let's go. Oh, 20, verse 3 to 5. Exodus 20. We just want to know where these boys were standing on. They were standing on what? What did they know? What do you know about your God? What do you know about the person you serve? What do you came here, 7.30, for a service? You are coming for what? The people that know they are God, they shall be strong and they shall do. The people who compromise every day, they don't know God. When you have met God, you can't compromise. Hallelujah. Do you know there is a church that is open now? In some nation, I'll not mention it. Hallelujah. They call it a church for sinners by sinners. That's Pastor Martin. Hallelujah. People are compromising every day. Now they say, "Are oh, we come as sinners. Hey, do you know your God? You, they say we are sinners, but we love God. You are a liar. You can't say you love God and you do exactly what he said, don't do. Tell us whom you love. You love the devil. Because he has been a sinner from the beginning. It's led by porn stars, that church. Go Google it. Let's read the Bible. Exodus 20, verse 3 to verse number 5. Thou shalt have no other gods before Did you me. hear this? They are called, you said, thou shalt not have any other god. Read it. Read it as the preacher say. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Continue. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above Mm -hmm. or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Uh Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Did you hear that? Thou Thou shalt not create a graven image. You will not bow. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew they are in Babylon. But even when they are in Babylon, they don't put away their God. We are here and we are with God here. And the same laws of our God, they apply in our hearts. We will not follow what the Babylonians do. Hallelujah. We are here. Ay, 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 ay. Hallelujah. Beloved, we are living in days where the church is under pressure to compromise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastors are under pressure to compromise because if we teach you the truth, you, you leave church and you go to the church of sinners by sinners. But let it be so. We will not compromise the word of our God. He said, thou shall not worship any other God apart from me. Who do you worship? So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not priests. They were not elders. They were not apostles. They were just boys. But they knew their God. 
They said, we will not do this. Can I talk to somebody that is here today? The world is pressurizing the church to dilute the gospel, to accommodate sin and idol worship. But I'm here today to challenge the church. You want to win all your battles in life. Point number one, tell yourself, tell your mind, tell your body, tell your spirit, tell your soul. I will not compromise no matter what. Hallelujah. These are the days for us to stand for the gospel and say, I know who called me. I know the God that saved me. I don't care what, who might be doing what. I don't care who. Remember, they were not the only uh, uh, Jews who were <laughs> captured, who were in Babylon. They were many. Some of them had already started bowing. But these three boys, they said, no, it doesn't matter. Even if our elders are bowing, but we know the God we serve. He said, you shall not bow to any other God. Hallelujah. If you don't know, there is a revival in the realm of the spirit that is landing down on earth. It is the revival of purity and holiness. Hallelujah. That shall trigger world transfer. I'll teach you someday. Hallelujah. In this house, hallelujah, holiness and purity is our consecration. Look at your neighbor and say, Ungwala. Do you belong here? This is our consecration. Hallelujah. We are people of integrity. We don't steal at work and saying it's on Jalikiwa. We don't bribe the policemen. We are, ah, yeah, it's our consecration. It's our consecration. Hallelujah. We declare at the border. It's our consecration. Hallelujah. It is our consecration. It doesn't matter what other people are saying. But we know the word of the Lord. He says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, Be ye holy as I am holy. So I don't do what my classmates do. I don't do what they are doing at college. I don't do what they do in Zimbabwe. I do what my God does. Hallelujah. If you didn't know, hallelujah, holiness and purity is not only a spiritual standard. It is more than that. It is the standard of the, your fear, your respect, and your love for God. It is the measure of how much you desire to be like him. Hallelujah. Actually, it is a weapon of breakthroughs. If you didn't know, I want to teach you today because you came for first service. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Holiness is a weapon of warfare. Oh, yeah, my yeah. Holiness is a weapon of warfare. Look at your neighbor and say, holiness is a weapon of warfare. There is nothing that the devil fears like holiness. Because anything we do, the devil can do, but he can never be holy. If you think you're a preacher, the devil can preach better than you. <laughs> the nonsense that people are saying is the Bible they are trying to do, is the devil preaching to them. The devil can try to convince you that God is not here. He's a preacher. He's a singer, bro. <laughs> but there's one thing that I know the devil cannot do. He can never be pure. <laughs> he can never be holy. <laughs> Just like he's trying to convince everyone. Because he knows he can't. He now comes to you and says, no one can be holy. No, he's trying to tell you that I cannot be holy as a devil. And when I join it, Satan united. And you go around the world telling people that no one can be holy. But God said, the Bible says, be holy as I am holy. He comes to Abraham and says, walk before me and be thou perfect. How can God tell you that which is impossible? If God said it, so it is. So I need to I've been preaching holiness for, to you over the years. I'm not trying to preach holiness. I'm not limiting you from pleasure. I'm empowering your life. 
so that you can get to a place. It doesn't matter how many satanists. I hear people, you know, if all of us here can be holy, it doesn't matter how many satanists can decide to come to our church. We don't even worry whether they are there. If you know one satanist, come tell them to come and sit next to me. Why did God not cast away the devil when he came, when the children of men, the sons of God, were appearing in the book of Job? Because the devil is of no effect to God. So when God is saying be holy, he's trying to make you Satan proof. And when I are stupid, you are thinking that he's cheating you. Me, it doesn't matter, I can go among us, any Satanist. You will be, hey, we saw two Satanists who came to church. So what? Who do, they, who, who do they affect? If you are still being affected by Satanists, you have a problem. Can you, can you wash your life? Can you wash your life in the blood of Jesus? Can you do something about your life? Be holy as I am holy. Now, it seems that it means that you then become the authority. Let me, let me tell you, you don't have authority. You become the authority. Ah, yeah, yeah. So these boys knew that they were authority if they have God. I think he's not. The greatest weapon is holiness and purity because this is the only level that puts a man in the dimensions of God. Be holy as I am. Be my equal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I, can I give you a secret? Do you know that the many testimonies that you hear in this church is not because we pray a lot. I know people who pray better than me, but they don't have the results I have. Mm -hmm. Because holiness is for results. So when uh, you go and fornicate and then go on the mountain six, six hours to pray, bruh, <laughs> you are foolish. They, I'm not saying don't pray, but can you imagine a holy man pray? Can you imagine a pure man pray? <laughs> the problem we have, the devil has not stopped people from praying, but he has stopped people from being holy. Your prayer as a sinner, the only prayer that is accepted as a sinner is, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. Oh, God, is not, it's not regarded. You like someone who's waffling in a composition. Purity and holiness gives you weight in the realm of immortals. Your words have power to happen. Amayakata. Hallelujah. Do you know when you come, those who have come for one-on-one, -on -one, usually I don't, I, don't, I don't pray long prayers. Because I have learned that I have to use my advantage. My advantage is that I'm a holy man. So what I say happen. So we simply just say to you shortly, otherwise you can just say, oh, go, the good Lord bless you. I remember one day somebody said to me, is that all? I said, yeah. You go. I have no water. I have no oil. But I have holiness. Go. Hallelujah. There is a testimony that because that person was not from this house, she came, she's very old, and they have not had a child. So she came and tried to explain the complications of why they are not having a child. I just looked at her. I said, you cannot believe me now, but you will come back with a testimony. That was in November. Okay? She came back last month. She's already four months. Let me tell you, uh -uh, before you clap your hands, holiness is a weapon. Purity is a weapon. And that weapon makes you an authority. And the authorities are allowed to decree things. So, never attempt to decree anything if you know that your life is mixed. Don't even try. You are not an authority. Because authority are not authority. If you are an authority, you cannot be ruled. When you are ruled by lust, forget you are ruled by lying. You are not an authority. Cry. Don't decree. The problem we have made in church, we are making everyone decree. 
And do you know the scripture we are using? We are using a scripture in, in, in Job 22. Start at the top of that scripture. And you hear what he talks about. He says, acquaint yourself. How do you acquaint yourself? Be holy as you are. Acquaint yourself with him and you shall be at peace. And the man who tells us to decree a thing, if you go to Job chapter 1, the Bible says he was holy. He was a perfect man. Read Job chapter 1 in, in, in Message Bible. You hear his description. It's not every Jack and Jew who just say, I decree and I do what? What authority? <laughs> Declaration are made by authorities, judges, who decree a thing. But when I are lacking, say, that's why he said, be holy as I am. Move up to the standard of authorities, then you can decree a thing. <laughs> if you think I'm joking, you use holiness to heal people. You didn't know. I'll teach you today. Whatever your problem is, we can actually speak over it. Yes, let's go. Job chapter number one, verse number one. Yes. Job was a man who lived in ooze. Mm. He was honest inside and out. Did you hear that? Inside and what? You are not your problem, you are only inside. But out. For two weeks. Hey. Give your neighbor a high five and say to them, holiness is power. No wonder it's not every Jack and Jill that can do this game. But there is a game I know that is difficult. Holiness is tight. Then you think, no, I'll lie for the, for the last time. I'll go and confess. Holiness is power. Holiness is power. You have, say, you have been saying for the last time, for the past five years, you have never gotten to last. You keep going until the day you say, say, even if I die, I die. This is what I did. People always say, say the truth and shame the devil. You thought, you thought that, was a small, that was a small statement. It's a huge statement. The way you lie. Some of you, you lie and even lie to your children. And then after that, you call them for prayer. Then you start to declare. I want to declare over you. You shall, you shall, you shall not be the tail, you will be the head. But, but from where? It's like you meeting a crazy man there, but after that, then they look at you and say, you know what? From today, I'm making you a millionaire. That's exactly what happens in the realm of the spirit with some of us. Even the demons, let, let me tell you, you cannot cast the demon you have cooperated with to do something. Read. Job was a man who lived in Uz. He was honest inside and out. Yeah. A man of his word. Yeah. Who was totally devoted to God. Yeah. And hated evil with a passion. He hated evil with a passion. How much do you hate evil? You, you hate it on Sunday. And then during the week, we are called, should I go? No. Should I go? No. Uh, okay, God will understand. Which God is that? If we now you will not even understand that. What about God? Can I, can I give you this? Holiness gives you weight. Stop trying to decree things or declaring things when you know you are not okay with God. It will only bring shame to your life and to our Lord. The man who told us this job, he hated evil with a passion. I want to show you how purity works. I will not, you can write this scripture, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 6. Hallelujah. The prophet comes to Ezekiel. His, Ezekiel is faced with a deadly sickness, and the prophet comes not to pray for him to be healed, but to tell him that he is not going to survive but die. Ezekiel turned towards the wall and 
pulls out the weapon of purity and holiness and he says, Lord, remember how I have walked before you with a pure heart, with a perfect heart, with a truthful heart. I, he, he ended by saying, I have done all that pleases you. Five minutes. The answer had come. Purity is a weapon of wrath. Hezekiah was sick unto death. He didn't say, I cast you out. I, no. He says, Lord, remember how I have walked before you. When, when you pray, you say, God, forget the past. Let's do a new thing. He says, remember how I have walked before you. Ha ha! If, 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 if a deadly sickness that was on Hezekiah could be healed by purity and holiness, what is it that can stand when you stand in purity and holiness? I don't care right now. Your doctor might have said, your heart, what, what? Your, your what, cancer, what, what? I come with the power of purity and holiness. God, I have kept your word. And in your word, you also say, I am healed by your strength. But when you don't have it, your only prayer is mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. And say, we have a weapon that we are supposed to use. And that weapon is our consecration. From today, I decree and I declare to everyone that is in this place, because of your walk and your relationship with God and how you have kept the consecration, you never lose in the matters of life. Whatever is sent against you, uh, it will not find a way. It will not find an opportunity in your life. I declare you a winner in the issues of life. My God. Hallelujah. Let's read from verse, whew, let me just summarize. Verse 14 to 15, the king now addresses the boys. You understand? He started telling them, he uses all threats and military words to cause them to be fearful and to compromise. And when he ends, he ends in pride. Verse 15, he even demonstrates his pride and foolishness by saying these words, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? He, was, he didn't know that they, he is not God. He didn't know that there is a great one who is called the great I am. The one who was and is and is to come. The lifter of men, the one seated on the throne. The one who's sovereign, no one puts him in power, and no one can take him out of power. He is the ancient of days, he was, and is, and is to come. His name is called El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. His name, El Mayaka, he's called Elohim, my God. Nebuchadnezzar makes a mistake, says, who is that God who's going to deliver you? Let's go to point number two, which is the last one I close. Verse 18, verse 18, hallelujah. So now, your point number two, for you to win all battles of life, hallelujah, you must love and serve God unconditionally. Did you hear that? You must love and serve God what? Unconditionally. Hallelujah. Let's read it. Let's read it. Eighteen, yeah. But if not... Be it known unto thee. No, okay, okay, start 17. Verse number 17. Yeah. 317, Daniel. Yeah. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver Did us. Did you hear that? They said our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. But that's not the issue because everyone can serve a God who is able. Do you know why some people come to these churches? Because of testimonies. Can I ask you a question? What if God does not perform what you have prayed for him to perform, will you still serve him? What if God... <laughs> yeah, but I, read, read, read to these guys. Read, read about these guys. I'm closing now. Even if we saw our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, yes. and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Yes. Verse number 18. Yes. But if not, yes. be it 
known unto thee, O king, yes. that we will not serve thy gods, uh -huh. nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Uh -huh. Listen, another version, the boy says, we are not even careful to answer you on this one. Hallelujah. We are not even, we are not even considerate. We are not considering our words. We are not even saving them when it comes to this. Hallelujah. Even if, even if God does not do it, we, let it be known that we will not bow to any other God. Let me talk to you. Are you worshiping God on condition that he heals you? On condition that he makes you prosperous? On condition that, you know, he makes your things go well? If that's the case, this is why you lose in the matters of life. The boy says, we will save God. Whether he, lives, he lets us die, we will save him even then. Even if it doesn't come through, we will save him. When you take that stance, heaven has no choice but to move on your behalf. But the problem with many people, they have conditions on God. God, if this year ends without me being married, I'm going. So you think the devil is foolish. He will make sure he does everything that by the end of the year you are not married. Say so that you go to him. How, will, will you save God? Hallelujah. You are praying for your father to be healed. He dies. Will you come to church and pray? Hey, my Yakata, you are praying at church, they are, sorry, at work, they are laying off people. And you are praying that you are not retrained and your name is the first one on the list. Will you come to church? That girlfriend you have been together since form two. And next month you want to go and pay Lobola. And she breaks your heart. Will you come here? And say, Makanaka Cheso. Who am I talking to in this place? If you want to win, you are supposed to be sold out for Jesus. No condition. Not because he has done anything, but because he's Jesus. He's the Lord. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. And the end, I save him. In season and no season. Man, just see the problem. You have a who are conditioned. We are too much. 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 We Hey, my sister, if you are like that, you are supposed to stand and say, God, me, I love you. I'll never compromise. Even if nothing happened, there is no testimony in my life, but I still come and bow before you. I'll still come and save you. When you do that, you win in life. Hallelujah. Didn't Job win? He did. Shut the mission up, didn't they win? They did. Can I talk to you? Can, can you imagine being Joseph? Can you imagine being Joseph? Hallelujah. You have, you have this dream in hand, and you start telling people, your brothers hate you. You refuse to lie. Because that's the first thing that Joseph did. The brothers will come and lie to the father. You come and tell the truth. This is why the father loved him. He didn't just start loving him from nothing. Go read the Bible properly. Hallelujah. And you are telling the truth. The next thing, you are thrown in a pit. And you are saying, guys, they throw you in a pit. They lie to your father, you are dead. They sell you to foreigners. You get to Egypt. You are bought by Potiphar. Can you imagine of all people with that woman in the house? That's the man who says, I want him. Yeah. And God, I have heard people say, why did God allow it? To and God allows it. That you are bought by Mr. Potiphar. And you get home, there is Mrs. Potiphar. If you read the Bible, the Bible says, Mrs. Potiphar, taking hold of Joseph. No, she started by laying her eyes. Do you know the eyes of lust are heavier than 20 kgs? 
he started he started oppressing the boy through eyes Go read the Bible. I didn't write it. He oppressed him through. You know, people of last year, the one who couldn't learn Panda, the one back and learn a Soviet level was to see a banana pan. But the level was to see. If you not, if you not wondered why certain people approach you, if you don't know, women can sit on a table talking like that and say, "You see that guy there? You come for me." They are talking. You know what she's sending? It's a spirit. Because in the realm of the spirit, like terms attract. Because when Jesus come, if you didn't know, he, does, he will not come here. You will be in the, in the sky. And the, those who are like him, they shall be caught up. It doesn't start then. Even now, we are seven. And even the spirit of darkness uses that. But after that, you think, okay, let me run away. He runs away. And then he is given life in imprisonment. Will you still say he's God? When he's in prison, he gets there, there's the baker. <laughs> Hallelujah. What was the other guy? The burglar. The, the burglar survives. He tells them their dream. He says, remember me. Two years. And you are wondering, why didn't God even cause the butler just to remember me? But Joseph did not end. If you were Joseph, you would have refused when you get to prison. I don't want to interpret people's dreams. I don't interpret the people of Guru Guru. Interpret your fuckers in church after you testify. I told him to chill and cry. Hey, where now? Are you ready to serve God even if you lose everything? Are you ready to serve God even if you lose your business? You lose. Stand up. I have no time. I have no time. My soul longs for you. Nothing else will do. Nothing. Can you read for me Job? Chapter 19, verse 25 to 27. I close. Are, are you, your problem is that you are serving God with conditions. God, if you heal me now, I will become a preacher. No chance. God, I will preach. Even when I'm in pain, God, I will preach. Even when things are not going okay, because I serve you. I know I don't serve my conditions. I don't serve my situations. I don't serve my circumstances. When you do that, you will win in life. You will win in life. Your problem is that when you are broke, you think you are dead. God, if you don't give me a job in this month of financial fortunes, ah, uh, God. I'm going to see that in Yanga next door. Please, can you go now and see that in Yanga? Because God does not want to be put in competition. So if you are not ready for God, go do what you think it works. And when it has failed, you can now come back to God. Because God wants people who are sold out to him. People always say, ah, God loves me unconditionally. Why do you love him with conditions? Read that. Job, Job 19.22. Why do you pursue me? No, 25, 25. 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, hey. and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Hey. Continue. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, hey. yet in my flesh shall I see God. Did you hear what Job says? Hallelujah. is God, it's painful. No, he says one thing I know is that my redeemer liveth and he shall come down. Even though my flesh is being consumed by web, but I know my redeemer liveth. Do you know God in that situation? Do you know God when things are the way they are? I want to pray today. You want to win in life? Be sold out to God. No matter who leaves you. There are some people that if the husband divorced them, they leave Jesus. But now the tongues we hear, we think that is because they love Jesus. No, they love their husband. We have some kind of anything that they love God. And the way the day the husband gets home and says, Ah, oh, no, I have found someone uh, that I now love. 
Then now they say, oh, apostle, apostle, you don't know what is happening in my house. The devil is here. The devil is here. Why, why? I have been praying. I have been tithing. I have been fasting. I have been, hey, my sister, my sister, my sister. Save God without conditions. Do you really love God with your life? Whosoever want to go, they can go. Whosoever want to live your life, they can live your life. But one thing for sure, I will not leave Jesus. Even if everything else goes, I will stand with God. And I can assure you, you will always win. You always win. Go and read anyone. Go and read anyone who took a risk for the kingdom. They were announced winners in the issues of life. I've come here first service to announce to you this is a strategy to win. Be sold out to God 100%. Don't give God conditions about your life. Don't give God conditions about the economy. Don't give God conditions about the things happening in your life. Say, God, I love you and I will save you no matter what. Hallelujah. There's a story many years ago about this woman who used to praise God and make noise in church. But she was poor. She didn't have shoes. Then one day they bought her shoes. Someone bought her shoes and said, I'm giving you shoes. I want you to be quiet in church now that you are putting on shoes. So she decided to be quiet for a while. Then all of a sudden, she took the shoes and threw them away and said, shoes or no shoes, Jesus is Lord. I will praise you. I will lift you high when I... Ah. I want us to worship God today. Tell your neighbor, I love God, sir. You can backslide if you want, but I'll remain in God. You can go back if you want, but I'll remain in God. I can never lose God because of a condition. I will not compromise on God because of a condition. I love God from my heart, and I am a man of consecration. Father, we thank you this morning. Give you all glory and honor. Thank you for divine strategies to win all battles in life. Because in this life, we are winners. This is how we win our battle. This is how we win our battle. This is how we win our battle. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we will not compromise the gospel. We will walk in holiness and purity. Even if the whole world and the whole nation can turn away from God, but we remain sold out to walking by holiness, to walking in purity, to walking in integrity. Kayata. For we know holiness always wins. Purity always wins. For the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Father, we pray today, even as we are going back to the marketplace tomorrow, we will not compromise you because of the things of this world. We hold on to Jesus forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.